In this week's episode of our photography review show, we're going to review over 49 photos from 18 photographers. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our photography review show. Now I hope you had a great week and I hope you're ready for another portion of photography reviews. Now if you've never been here with us before, for those who don't know me, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex, England. Now for the past six or seven months, I've been reviewing photos here at the photographic community and it's been very, very popular. We reviewed thousands of images from hundreds of photographers and this is the reason why we had to limit the entries to one or two photos per week per photographer. And also for the same reason, we had to take the show and divide it between two or three different parts. Usually we look at the landscape photographers in the first part and then in the rest of the parts we look at the rest of the photography styles. Now before we're going to jump into the reviewing, I wanted to remind you about our Facebook photography group. It's called Clever Photographer Academy and it's all about photography. So all you need to do is to head to Facebook and search for Clever Photographer Academy and join us today. We uh, do regular photography competitions there, we review your photos, we answer your photographic questions and we have a lots of lots of fun. So if you haven't joined us yet, make sure you do that today. And now without any further ado, let's jump into the reviewing. Hello and welcome back to the second part of our show where we're going to be looking at the rest of the photography styles. We have a few mixed team photographers, then we have a street photography and we're going to end it by wildlife photographers. Now, mixed team photography to start with, uh, six photographers there. Basically, what it means is that those photographers sent us photos with multiple different teams. So, for example, landscape photography and macro photography or travel photography and portrait photography. So that's what we're going to look at and that's why we're going to start. But before we're going to do that, just a quick reminder to make sure that you like this video comment below and also subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating and producing content like this. But now, without any further ado, we're going to start with Evgeny right here. So two pictures from Evgeny, uh, kind of macro photography uh, slash some flowers still, uh, nature photography. So let's have a look at them. So Evgeny, beautiful two images with a lovely, lovely color. I mean, this one is a beauty. That's amazing picture. This one also very, very nice editorial uh, with a lovely glow and lovely details. So let's have a look at it, starting with the camera Pentax K 100D Super Sigma lens and then looking at the settings ISO 200, 300 millimeters, F11, 1 250th of a second. So um, ISO 200, yes, um, F11 <clears throat> with 300 millimeters creating still quite nice depth of field, even though, of course, you can recognize the background. It's nice and soft create quite a nice separation and one 250th of a second is perfectly fine for being handheld and uh, it's a little bit underexposed which I think really works here with the lovely glow coming through. So I think technically looking at it like this it's very well done. Obviously the sharpness on these foreground elements works very well. The light is very pleasing as well and uh, lots of good things on this. Now moving on this picture right here, uh, same camera. 300 millimeters again, F8, 1 250th of a second. So dropping down to F8, already getting this kind of heavy, heavy blur at the back, which works quite nicely. It creates almost like a bokeh view. However, um, this is beautiful. I mean, the, the wasp or the bee uh, looks great on the flower with lots of nice white uh, petals, creating a really nice contrast. The white against the yellow and green works very, very well. So quite nicely done. The sharpness on the animal itself is great. It's just when I kind of look at these parts, I wonder what is the green glow around them. Um, I don't think it's a chromatic aberration. It may be a little bit of a move, nothing crazy, but uh, it's just a little bit visible. That's probably the only thing I would say. It has a great light, so very kind of balanced if you light on this. So all in all, very well done. Which brings us to the composition. Now, uh, when we look at the lower third, it kind of doesn't sit in the center or to the side, so it's a little bit off. So, um, I mean, there are multiple different things you could do. We could lock the crop and just really bring it down. 
centering the flower in the center. So that could be one thing you could do. Next thing you could do, uh, do a similar thing, but just push it this way and really position the flower and the animal in this lower third. I think that would look quite cool too. And so on. So whatever you decide to do, that's what I would do. Other than that, I think the composition is great. As I say, the contrast of the white with the green works very well here. And I think it's very well done. Uh, the sharpness on the B again, standing on a yellow and the white works very, very well here. So all in all, as a composition goes, very well handled. Now, as a composition go, as I said on the beginning, this is a little bit of editorial photo. There's obviously a lot happening there. This is not necessarily image with a clear message. However, it's supposed to create certain feeling and I think that works very well. You're kind of thinking late summer or early spring with this kind of warm green colors. It looks great. It's very, very pretty. I wouldn't do anything differently. I think the way it's done, it's done nicely. The contrast of the warmth, uh, these parts really standing out. It's very, very well done. Well done. Post-processing, uh, this one is good. Maybe just a little bit of exposure to make it a little bit brighter. I think it just makes it a little bit more alive. Now on this one, depending what the crop would be, I think that's quite important here. If I would have it centered, then I would probably add just touch more vignette. Nothing crazy, but that's about it. And maybe a little brush with uh, extra brightness. Just kind of brushing on the animal and so on. So that's where we are on this one and this one. And uh, that's it. So Evgeny, well done. Love your pictures. Uh, excellent captures. So you should be really happy and proud of yourself. Thank you for sending them over. Take care, stay safe and send us more pictures as soon as you can. Which brings us to John Dalston. John, two images. This dog right here and a uh, seascape um, sunset, obviously. So let's have a look at it. Let's see what we have uh, here. Very kind of almost monotone capture, very simple uh, with a lovely long exposure here. Beautiful sky with beautiful colors. So let's have a look if we have camera details and we have. So this was Nikon D810, 35 millimeter lens um, from your camera settings, uh, 31 ISO. So you probably can't go any lower than this, F16. 30th second. So playing around with the um, exposure, obviously 30 second. This is why you're getting this beautiful uh, kind of flat water, almost looking like a fog coming over. So that's really, really cool. Uh, always with the long exposure, it's really important to have sharp details on these foreground elements, which you have. So I think that works really well as well. And in overall, it's beautiful, beautiful, very, very well done. Love the texture in the sky, love the color. Well done. When we jump to the doggy here, it's again Nikon D850, 64 ISO, uh, 102 millimeters, f2.8, 1800 of a second. It's very nicely done. I love the details on the dog. Um, I love the blur at the back. I think that really creates a really nice separation. The details on the, uh, on the bottom here, I think works very well. Everything is nice and sharp. It's a very nice light. I'll tell you what, the only thing, John, I just wish that there was more down here. There was a little bit more space. It's very, very tight crop, which I think would deserve just a little bit more here. Other than that, it's great. You know, the separation with the background, the color really creating really nice contrast. Just very lovely. Just a little bit more space there, I think would really make it just pop out a little bit more for me. Other than that, as a composition goes, I think it's nice. Um, obviously, um, you could probably, for me, crop it a little bit more down. Um, maybe even as far as something like this, but that's more personal choice than anything else. So uh, it's up to you. Uh, moving on this one, <laughs> you know, you always wish for things when you're on the location and you would just wish the rock or stone would be a little bit more here. So then you could close the composition a little bit more and have these two in the center. But things never really go the way we would like them to go. So still as a composition, I love this kind of compositions and at the techniques when you have this really flat water, and you just have these kind of references poking out of it, creating and making you aware of the long exposure. I think that works really well. The sky is beautiful. Um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a cropping, obviously this for me would be something I would be kind of hoping for. Um, maybe, you know, something like this with the rock here. I think that would be a little bit more powerful, but that's just the way it is. Nothing we can do. Uh, so we bring it back. 
and other than that um love it moving to the post-processing i really like this gentle edit so I, I mean personally i would have it much more popping out but that's just my style that has nothing to do with what's wrong or right with it i think it's super cool how it's very kind of calm and ethereal and gentle so it's very cool there's maybe a little bit of extra sky compared to what i would think it would need it you could really just kind of crop a bit of it off just to keep the kind of tension in and really things happening there other than that very well done and with the dog with the post processing it's a great black and white john i know you know your black and white photography so i'm not surprised with the quality here it's great very carefully done and i love it so all in all john two different styles two different things uh, lots of details love that uh, nothing wrong with neither one of them really just a few tips and hints of maybe what you could do differently in the future which brings us to lorry lorry we have uh, two images from you one of this building with the beautiful uh, graffiti and one of the all if you wouldn't look uh, carefully you would probably even miss her or him so let's have a look if we have camera details on this one. This one is from uh, Canon uh, 5D Mark II. Uh, the settings ISO 160, uh, f5.6, 1 250th of a second. So all good there, uh, including the ISO is perfectly fine. 5.6 creating this really nice blur at the back. As usual, uh, something what I probably see really really often when it comes to wildlife photography is the fact that these animals usually live in the same surroundings as their own color which makes complete sense they want to hide and they don't want to be recognized and this is a perfect example of it obviously a beautiful animal with the beautiful colors but really blending with the foreground background and middle ground mostly with the background so it really uh, the only contrast you created with was was with the blur which is super well done so that's the idea but you would just wish that maybe the background would be green or something to really have it all popped out a little bit more uh from uh, uh the kind of details i see there is a lot of details on animal which is beautiful on the rock too just kind of double check these elements here this is kind of something what poke my eye right away it just seems maybe you done a little bit of editing here and i just need it just needs a little bit of uh fixing other than that Love it, love it, love it. Moving on this one. Um, ISO 170 millimeters, F4, 1, 1,250th of a second. So as a setting goes, nothing wrong with that. Um, I would have probably go with the F-stop a little bit higher. There's no need here for going for F4. There's no depth or you didn't need to go for an extra speed because obviously this was, well, this is 10 o'clock in the night. That's interesting. Um, lots of light for 10 o'clock or maybe sometimes the light Sometimes the time isn't exactly right. Either way, um, I would just go higher with the f-stop. That would bring down a little bit the shutter speed, but in this situation, um, it's not a problem at all. Um, otherwise, it's nice. Yeah, I love the capture. Uh, lots of details. A little bit harsh light, but nothing crazy. Very well done. Uh, which brings us to composition. I think when whenever a building is your main element, Unless it's the really artistic reason too, I would always make sure that the building is straight, which can be really easily done here in geometry by using the auto most of the time. If the auto doesn't help, you can use the leading lines. So we can do that. Just kind of paint them on a side. Like this. And something like this let's see so there you have it so that's what I would do uh, just to make it nice and straight and other than that leave it now when it comes to composition here let's have a look at your cropping mm, I think I would just push it a little bit more uh, to make sure that the bird is on my lower uh, topper third so I can lock it keep the same ratio you had and maybe just go for something like this so she's nicely positioned here those are the kind of points where uh, human eye gets focused first and this is where I would kind of push it and take it. Other than that, as a composition, I think it's quite cool. So nothing wrong with that. Well done. Which brings us to uh, post-processing. Now, um, it's just a similar color. Yes, you could push a little bit different things. Uh, maybe just a little bit of the contrast to kind of let it stand out. You could push a little bit of the 
texture. Obviously, you want to check these elements to see how you could remove them. And other than that, I would leave it. Now, talking about this one, you could do kind of different things. You could, for example, turn it to this local color uh, thing, which I think would look really cool. Let's try it. Let's see if we can create, uh, uh, um, if we can duplicate the photo. That's it. So uh, this is your original, which looks really cool. Nothing much to add to it. Let's go and do something a little bit different. We take the brush, brush. We do minus saturation and really go and all of this away. Which the bit more careful. Careful there. Something like this is good. I wonder if we would leave the green there. Maybe leave the green there. If not, then get it without it. That looks cool as well. And maybe get something like this. Now, all of this away. And now what we want to do, we want to do some other editing. We want to maybe push the clarity. Oh, no. The other way. Okay, the other way. Add a text. Then add a vignette. This bring down the exposure as well a little bit. Bring up the contrast and check the blacks, check the whites. And um, we can do one more here. Create mask, radial gradient, really point it at the picture itself. Just kind of invert it, really put down. So it's just something a little bit different. Let me show you before, after, and uh, it kind of helps to stand it out. Of course, you could play around with it. You could add colors somewhere else and so on, but it's just, I think it's nice. It's just something a little bit else. You could do so much more to it. You could play around with some fade and make it look really kind of like a, kind of like a, like a Instagram art, you know, with uh, extra, glow and extra clarity just on the painting itself for example um so an extra saturation even yeah something like this to have it stand out even more and so on so this was lots of fun Floris, just to give you an idea of what else you could do with it um thank you very much for sharing your photos with us it was a pleasure to review them and do a little bit fun stuff with it and make sure you send us more in the future which brings us to Slavko. Slavko, lots of images. And just a reminder that we only do one or two pictures uh, a week. So let's talk about the ones we, I haven't seen before. Let's talk about this one and this one, for example. So this one we can keep for next time. Um, and let's focus on those two. So staying here, starting with this one with the sunset. Um, no camera detail and small quality. Okay, Slako, I'm really sorry. I would love to review them for you. However, you need to send them in a bigger quality than 55 kilobytes. The moment I zoom in, uh, there's absolutely nothing to review. You see the pixelation similar here. You know, when I zoom in, it's just no details. I can't because this is what we would do. We would start with the technical review. So we would talk about a sharpness. Now from this point, there is no sharpness. You don't see any. Uh, we will talk about noise. There is a lot of noise and it's all just created from the size of the image. So if you have them in a bigger size, please make sure you send them over to us. I would love to review them. However, uh, unfortunately, because of the size, I can't. Which brings us to Tony. Tony, we have uh, two images. So let's have a look at them. Starting here with this wildlife photo of this beautiful bird, a lovely background. This is a great example of catching a bird which has a certain color on the background, which has a different color and creating a beautiful color uh, contrast. I think that's really, really cool. I think one of the biggest, not mistakes, but shame on the wildlife photography I see is that you have a bird's beautiful capture, but then it has the same color as the background and it just kind of disappears. So this is really nicely done. So let's jump to it and let's have a look. 
Nikon D7200, big lens 82400 millimeters, and a camera settings ISO 100, 320 millimeters, so punched in, f5.6, 1 1000 of a second. So ISO 100, spot on there, f5.6, creating this really nice depth of field and a blur at the back, and 1000 of a second, just making sure everything is crisp sharp, which really works here. A little bit of the beak, but it's not a big deal. Um, it just works very, very nicely. So I think technically great light, lovely scene, great depth of field, lots of details, well done. Moving on this one, talking about technical details, this one is a Sony 7 Mark II uh, with your 16 to 35 lens. Now the camera settings, ISO 100, 20 millimeters, F9, 1 80th of a second. So looking at it like this, the ISO 100 again, spot on, F9 for this kind of landscape. Uh, depend on what your camera, how the performance goes. Since you have some of these elements quite close to the camera, I would go for maybe F11. So anything between F9 and F11 should still give you good sharpness all the way through. 1 80th of a second, making sure that everything stay uh, nice and sharp, nicely exposed, even though maybe it's handheld. Uh, when I look at here, there's a lot of sharpness in this part of the image, so that works nice. Uh, lots of details, lots of texture, uh, looking at it like this, no noise. There's still lovely details at the back here, uh, just a little bit too dark in this part for me, but other than that, I think technically, again, very nicely done. A little bit too blue, but we can look at that in uh, white balance, and other than that, very cool. Which brings us to composition, and when it comes to composition, I wish one thing, because I'm not a huge fan of cutting things off, specifically when it's a foreground element, and that's that this stone either isn't here or that you took a little bit of it so you could include it in the image. That would be my only thing. Otherwise, I think the picture really works well. You have your foreground, middle ground, background. Um, you have the trees really kind of helping with the depth. Uh, the thirds, so you have two thirds of the ground and one third of the sky works very well too. So I think all in all, put it together, composition-wise, it's nicely done. Now, this one, composition-wise, is also brilliant. I love this kind of piece of branch with the bird sitting on it, just filling the space, creating a really nice scene, unusual scene, and I love it. The bird holding on also works very, very well with a little bit of the green. Uh, excellent. And then again, if I will repeat myself with the contrast, it's just great work because it's something what's uh, it's really missing on a wildlife photography. So, excellent capture. That brings us to the final part, and that's a post-processing, where with this one, absolutely nothing I can add. Natural colors, lots of texture, lots of highlights, shadow, well done together. Excellent, excellent image. And on this one, what I would do, I would double check the white balance. Do auto, and of course not as yellow, but just a touch, I think. And with the green, you can see it has a kind of green tint in these areas. So I think a little bit like this to make it a little bit more natural goes a long way. Um, other than that, yes, you could add a little linear gradient here on the bottom with maybe some minus exposure to close it a bit more and bring a bit more attention to the center. Other than that, I would leave it. Tony, thank you so much for sharing your photos with us. It's a pleasure. The bird is amazing. Excellent capture. Thank you. You stay safe. And if you have any more, uh, photos, make sure you send them over to us. That brings us nicely into the last mix for team photographer and to Zdenik. Zdenik, thank you so much for keep coming back, for sending your images. It's always so much fun to review them. It's a pleasure to see them. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So again, we have uh, two images. We have these elephants with uh, rain um, in South Africa, South Africa. And then we have this a cactus like a plant in the middle of a landscape so well done and let's have a look at it let's start with this one right here and let's look at the camera canon 600d uh, with the lens 18 55 millimeters from the camera setting iso 100 32 millimeters on your lens f9 1 250th of a second so first things first good that we stick in with the iso 100 today in today's episode we've been really all good at that f9 is uh, good yeah the, to keeping everything sharp anyway uh, f11 would have been fine as well but i think you're good there and 1 250th of a second creating quite nice exposure 
with some details in the sky and so on. So very well done. Light, yes, like we talked several times before, obviously you need to be careful with the uh, with the harsh sun, a little bit of the harsh shadows here, but uh, nothing too crazy, still keeping lots of uh, texture and the light popping out anyway. Which brings us to this one, this again, the same camera. So same camera, different lens. So this time uh, it's 55 to 250 millimeters. And uh, this is ISO 400, so a little bit higher ISO, uh, 55 millimeters, uh, F4, one one hundred of a second. So um, looking at it like this, uh, you maybe added the rain in post-processing, if I would mean to say so. And uh, the rain is gray, so that is a bit uh, shame. I'm, I don't know if the rain is gray like this. I don't know if you'd add it in post-processing anyway, but uh, still very creative what you've done with it. I think it's lovely. Uh, as the camera goes and the setting goes, obviously you wanted to make everything sharp. So the 400, ISO 400 is fine. F4, creating quite nice depot field. So you see the main elephant and the elephant at the back kind of a little bit softer. So that's fine. And one one hundredth of a second doesn't make it 100% sharp, but it's almost there, so I think that's fine. Um, when it goes to composition here, I wish there was more space around them a little bit, at least in front of the elephant. I think that would really, really help. So just a little bit more, I think that would be helpful. Other than that, obviously the elephant being dominant like this, interacting, walking with the rain, I think it's quite cool and very storytelling. Uh, which brings us to this image right here. Um, Typical landscape, again, similarly, just try to kind of keep an eye on your edges. This is, I think, where you would wish uh, the bush would be there in the full uh, color. So similarly, you would kind of just push the camera a little bit there, and I think that would help. Also, there are just some kind of parts of the image. You can see it here and here where you need to keep an eye on because it's, I don't know what it is. Maybe you can write in a comment what it is or just send me a message. Uh, because they are just bits which kind of really standing out. So just something to kind of think of uh, for a future. But other than that, the composition is nice. Again, storytelling, describing the South Africa, uh, lovely sky with the moon, clouds. So well done uh, putting it together. Thank you very much for uh, sending that one over. As the post-processing goes, not much to add here. I think... Um, you know, I'm always a little bit less exposure maybe and just double checking your highlights and shadows goes a long way. Uh, this And maybe just a little bit less uh, saturation, just a touch and push it up with the vibrance. Well, which brings us to this. Now, as it's raining, I would have expected it to be a little bit more blue. Uh, green, I think it's enough already. Now, so that's cool. Let's add a heavy vignette here. Something like this, not crazily, but something like this. And I think what would look cool as well here in the light and in the curve, we can add a little bit fade to it. So something like this. So that makes it a little bit like a documentary, like, and I think that's quite cool. So something like this. You can see it mostly in the shadows, but I think that's quite nice. Other than that, let's do a little bit of a brush and maybe with the exposure, bring a little bit of brightness to the face here. Not that much, but just a little, something subtle. And then we can do similar thing with minus exposure. And so let's see. Before, after, just something a little bit different. Uh, I hope uh, that maybe it gives you some ideas. Still well done with trying different things with the rain and so on. I think it's cool. Maybe with the brighter areas when you're doing the rain, you want to mask them out a little bit. Uh, and it's always good to look at another picture of a rain in a similar situation to get some kind of reference point and to kind of know where to go uh, from there. Other than that, thank you so much for sharing uh, the images with us. It was a pleasure to review them. You take care. Stay safe, and I hope to see more pictures from you soon. Which brings us to a little bit of a street photography right here. A little bit of different idea. Girls taking pictures of themselves. Now, this one is from uh, Michael. Or Michael. 
uh, let's have a look what we have here. Michael, Michael. So we have these two ladies. Again, this was captured with Nikon D850, uh, the lens 28 to 300, ISO 200, 300 millimeters, f5.6, 1 400 of a second. So uh, ISO 200 is fine, little lower situation, I understand. 300 millimeters, so been really zoomed in. Uh, f5.6 is uh, on the lower side, but 1 400 of a second. Now, um, this is all nice, crisp and sharp. However, I'm afraid the ladies aren't. You can really see the blur here. You can see the blur on the face. You can also see the blur and a light leak on her face. So uh, really, one way around it would be to turn them into the silhouettes. That's one thing you could do. Uh, other than that, obviously, reshooting it. But that would be one thing you could do and try and see if that would help a little bit. Uh, on this one, because it's a similar image, I assume the setting is exactly the same. Yeah, they are a little bit more sharp here, but you're still getting the kind of like leak coming from. So basically here they were standing where here they were moving. But I tell you what, looking at it like this as a part of Siri, I wish you would have a third image because usually these things come in three. So you have one, two, three, maybe them walking away. And that would actually create a really nice series. It would be a little bit uh, different. I would quite like that. As the composition goes, I think it's all connected with the storytelling. So it's quite cool. I think the square crop works nicely here. Um, you would probably want to kind of try different things, maybe keeping them more in a center here. So doing more something like this would be a good fun um, or so on, you know, and then just kind of working around with it. I wonder if you would turn them into silhouette, what would it do uh, if we can maybe close the shadows? Uh, so to do something like this and you almost get the kind of silhouette view, maybe not as much, but just something like this. And suddenly uh, you take away a little bit of the, a little bit of the, of the unsharpness and softness and make it and turn it to something a little bit different. So that's about it. So that's what I would do with it. I think it's a lovely idea. I'm a big fan of series. I think one more picture, them walking away and suddenly you have a story and something to work with, Michael. So thank you very much sharing it with us. You stay safe and I can't wait to see more images from you in the near future. Which brings us to wildlife photographers, three wildlife photographers to look at, starting with Gregor. Gregor, we have this swan capture right here and the Cactus capture right here. So, uh, Gregor, um, looking at your settings, Canon 80D, 70 to 300 millimeters. Now, ISO 6400 is high, high, high ISO. 300 millimeters is nice, but this is really kind of zoomed in. And uh, F32, which is also really high. And 1 60th of a second. That's a interesting um, camera setting. So first you have a really high ISO, which is probably part of the reason why you have this kind of soft looking image. So there is no sharpness in the feathers and everything. So that's number one. F32, uh, you know, each camera and a gear has a certain threshold where once you hit it, um, it starts to reintroduce noise back into the image and take away the sharpness. So that could be another reason why you get kind of softer edges. And one sixtieth of a second for a wildlife photography it seems to be quite slow. Not necessarily maybe the animal wasn't moving or so on. So it's a good capture, but I would have gone a little bit faster than that. So just something to kind of uh, look at. The close up is very nice. As a composition goes, I think it's brilliant. However, it, I, I just wish it would be much more crisp and sharper. The water on it, it's beautiful. Obviously, the, the eye in the center, I think it creates very nice image. Everybody looking at it right away know it's a swan, but uh, just something to kind of think of when it comes to setting. And if I would have to choose first thing, I would try to avoid it's the high ISO. So maybe this was really dark, but then if you have an F32, it's you're going to look for lots of light. So I bring the F-stop down to, I don't know, seven, because anyway, the blur doesn't matter. There's nothing behind it lower the ISO and then play around with the shutter speed. Uh, this one on the other side isn't really the most interesting subject on the world. Uh, again, uh, some kind of cactus with um, this time, uh, same camera, Canon 80D, 105 lens, ISO 400. So again, quite high ISO for what you're photographing, should be 100 and then work around it, making sure that you don't introduce any additional noise or color noise to the image. 
uh, F4. So creating this lots of blur and softness around it and one 250th of a second. Now it's a, it's a still object. So with your shutter speed, you can go all the way down to one 50th of a second, even doing handheld. F4 is fine if you like this softness around, which is just artistic decision. But by bringing the shutter speed down, you would have been able to bring the ISO down and um, maybe just try to review the different settings. It's almost like a triangle. You have your ISO, f-stop, shutter speed, and it all kind of works um, around each other. And I think you just need to look at ways of how you can keep the ISO down. Other than that, obviously, the sharpness on the points where you're focusing is quite nicely done. The light is a little bit even, but still nice and decent. There's lots of texture in it. The blur is heavy around, but still quite cool. Composition wise, it's interesting. However, it's not the most interesting subject on the world. It's a lovely plant, but mm, yeah, just kind of compared to the wildlife, it's not the strongest uh, subject ever. Where I think this one specifically, if it would be part of Siri, would work really, really cool. I think the composition and the idea of it is very well done. It's just technically I would wish for a little bit more sharpness. Which brings us to uh, post-processing. I think as a post-processing goes, uh, this one is a little bit on the bluer side. So double checking your white balance is always a good idea. Not as yellow, but I think a little bit of yellow, definitely. You can also check the picker and just make sure that she, what she has is white. So you just use the picker and set. So that's about it. And on this one, um, I wonder how it would look as a black and white. It would be something a little bit different and maybe a little bit interesting. You could push the contrast and you could really push the whites and blacks and maybe just create something a little bit different. You could uh, close the vignette a little and just play around with it a little bit like this. Anyway, Gregor, thank you so much for sending your image over. It was a pleasure to review them for you. If you have more, make sure you send them to us in the future. Okay, and let's move to the next photographer. This time we have a John Lister. John, let's have a look what we have from you. John, um, this beautiful white tiger, too, and then this lovely orange bird. So let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the camera setting, first of all. Nikon D7-1000, uh, no, 7100. The lens was 100 to 400 millimeters, and from camera setting, ISO 720. 400 millimeters f7.1 1 640th of a second so uh, lower light situation i assume with the iso being a little bit higher uh, the good thing is that it's not really visible that much so that's well done uh, 400 millimeters really punched in so it's a lovely portrait photo f7.1 in this kind of 400 millimeter creates a nice depth of field really separating the uh the face however still keeping the details in there so that's cool one 640 second means that we have a detail all the way through so all in all very well done love the expression in the love the details in the eye really you can see the hair and the mustache here it's just all in all the whiskers and everything it's just brilliant john well done i love it lots of nice color quite nice light very cool where on this one we are on different camera i think same camera same lens oh so ISO 1250, uh, F8, 1 400 of a second. So mm, obviously a little bit of a noise, um, which is visible from the detail and the sharpness, a little bit disappearing. Nothing crazy for how high your ISO is. Uh, however, um, F8 is fine. Again, I wonder if the background was black or if you made it black. Let's see if we push. Uh, I think maybe the, who knows, I'm not sure. You can see the painting a little bit, but nothing crazy. Still quite nicely done. Lots of details, nice depth of field, uh, nicely done. Which brings us to the composition as a part of the series. Definitely lovely, lovely details. Not sure completely about the harsh black. I think it's a little bit kind of too contrasty with the rest of the animal, but still nicely done. Really nice separation. Uh, lots of nice light, nice color, nice details, nice depth. So all in all, as a composition goes, it's quite nicely done. Well, this one is brilliant, loving it. Really, as a portrait goes, lots of details all the way through, not just his nose. So I think that's really well handled. Uh, lots of texture, just very, very well done, John. Loving, loving the picture. Um, nothing I would do differently. I think it's gorgeous. 
which brings us to a post-processing. I think on this one, only a vignette really to close on him. You could paint and brush different things to create more contrast if you would want to. But it looks very natural and I would leave it. And similarly with this one, I'm sorry, John, I can't give you much more hints uh, this week when it comes to post-processing because I think they are both very, very well done. So um, there's, if there is nothing more we can do to it, then we just have to leave it. And this is really cute, really nice. Both of them. This one is my favorite. However, it's just very well done. So, John, thank you very much for sharing your images with you. Well done on this one. Congratulations. And uh, I can't wait to see more pictures from you in the near future. Which brings us to the last photographer of this week. And that's Ken. Uh, Ken, we have a, a three images here. As you know, we always go for two images per photographer. So let's leave this one for next time. And let's just focus two. So this one is some kind of insect. And I can't remember the English name, so I'm not going to pretend that I know. However, let's have a look at the camera settings. So Nikon Coolpix P1000 from the camera settings, ISO 200, so nothing too crazy, although it brings a little bit of noise still, I'm not going to lie. Um, F5, so quite nice blur, almost like a bouquet blur at the back, also very cool. 1 500th of a second. Should give you a really nice uh, sharpness, but I think maybe the noise just takes it away. You can see the animal, yes, but it's a little bit more soft than I wish it could be. When we go to this one, same camera, ISO 100 here, so good, f4.5 and 1 320th of a second. Well, this one, you can see all the level of the details on it. I think that looks really, really cool. It's very well done. Uh, all the feathers and everything. Shame for the contrast because obviously the bird has a very similar color towards his background, but still nice capture from this point of view. The light is a little bit harsher. Mm, there's lots happening in this part of the image, but that's more for the composition, which we can talk about now. Uh, I love the bird is still all in its face, but I just think these pieces are a little bit of a shame. I wish they would be away. Uh, and they would make it a little bit more cleaner. Other than that, the bird in his full size, so I think that works quite nicely there. Here, the dragonfly. Oh, there you go. I remember. I knew I'm going to remember. Uh, the dragonfly, uh, maybe a little tighter crop would help on this one. Just do something like this. Maybe more towards the side, so something like this uh, would be a little cooler, and that's about it. Obviously, with all the wings sitting on the piece, Quite cool. Again, we can add a little vignette to it and leave it there. Similarly here, a little bit of a vignette. Uh, bringing down the overall exposure, I think, would also go a long way. Pushing the contrast, making sure my whites are good. So something like this, this, and then take it from there. So all in all, uh, Ken, lovely two captures. This one is my, uh, I would, I prefer this one because the bird is there all in all. The sharpness is excellent. The light is quite pleasing. It's a nice composition um, uh, where this one would need a little bit more love and uh, a little bit more details. But anyway, thank you as always to send the picture to us. Thank you for continuously sending picture to the show. It's always a pleasure to review your images and to see them. And for the rest of you folks, uh, if you want to join us, make sure you head to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash review. That's where you can find all the upcoming dates. And most importantly, the information about how you can join us already for the next episode of the Photography Review Show. Thank you very much for joining us this week. Stay safe, take care and keep shooting.